Uh, welcome to today's lesson, which is lesson number 20 of the course on industrial automation and control. Today, we are going to look at some new uh, programming elements, namely timers, counters, etc., which are required for RLL programming. We are going to understand their meanings and see their use in real, uh, simple but real typical industrial programs. So, before we get on, we take a look at the instructional objective, which is to so that a student will be familiarized or he will be able to describe various types of timers used in relay ladder logic. He will be able to describe a counter, he will be able to uh, construct RLL programs for uh, simple problems involving these timers and counters and he will also be able to be familiar with some program control, data transfer and uh, arithmetic instructions which are required in just like in any program you require if then else statements which are program control statements, add statements, you need statements for moving data from one location to the other. So, here also you need uh, such constructs. So, for writing complete programs they are sometimes necessary. So, we will get familiarized with some of them. Of course, we must remember uh, in this context that there are relay, relay ladder logic programs are often uh, somewhat uh, uh, non-standard. So, it is not that we are following a particular manufacturer's constructs, but it is very, very likely that most of these constructs will be found in uh, each PLC manufacturer's programming uh, repertoire. So, it is good to understand them in an abstract form and then if you are going to use a particular PLC, then look up the particular manual for such constructs. So, before we use timers and counters, we want to motivate them. Uh, so, we look take a, take a second look at our previous example of the die press. So, here is the die press where uh, basically there is a the uh, piston moves the die up or down depending on whether the up solenoid or the down solenoid is activated. This you know directs hydraulic power upward or downward uh, to the piston. So, the die moves up or down and there are two uh, sensors namely the upper limit switch and the lower limit switch uh, which are which sends the positions of the, the end positions of the uh, die. So, we take a look at the earlier solution which we proposed before in an earlier lesson. So, here, here uh, what we did is uh, Here, uh, we proposed a uh, an RLL program which used only the uh, normally on and the NO and there is, a, there is a normally open and the normally closed contacts, the real input contacts as well as some auxiliary contacts and some output coils. Now, what happens here is that let us say let us look at this that Initially, suppose the uh, suppose the down solenoid is on. So the down solenoid is on means this is on. So this is on. When this is on, obviously because you have an NC contact here, so therefore up solenoid is off. So the die platform is coming down. When it comes down, it eventually makes the down limit switch and the down lamp will go on. So, this goes to 1. Immediately, what will happen is that uh, is that 
this right, previously the path was path that was being followed for connection was this. So, this down solenoid will become off. So, now at this position the down solenoid is off and the up solenoid is off. So, the piston is slowing down there is there is no force forcing it down. So, it is slowing down. Now, what happens in this program is that the moment the down lamp is so at in this position the down lamp is on and the down solenoid has become off. So, now what happens here is that the down lamp is on. So, it becomes on while the down solenoid is now also on. So, this is also on because the down solenoid is off. So, and and this is a normally closed contact because this is a normally closed contact. So, therefore, when the down solenoid is off this is on. So, therefore, immediately the up solenoid becomes on. So, you see that normally for a for a die press the the die has to come down on the suppose it is a it is a it is a sheet metal on which you are trying to press into a particular form. Then you you do not want that the moment it comes below immediately it goes up you want it to probably wait a little while and then go up for the next uh, stamp. So, now it is a very it, it, it may be very uh, common that a time delay between up solenoid and down solenoid is needed that is after the down lamp is on and by the time the up solenoid again becomes energized we want a delay. So, what I wanted to say here is that such delays are very often needed in industrial operations and today we will see how to create these delays. Okay. So, we go on. So, now, so as we shall see we will actually see the solution a little later, but first let us look at the timers which actually creates these delays. Now, uh, here I want to mention that these timers, the timers are sometimes you have we are all familiar with timers we are possibly our first interaction with uh, introduction to timers was in the digital electronics course. Now, those timers are actually hardware timers they you, you may you may actually use hardware timers also in a PLC in which case you, you have a you have a separate you may have a separate timer card. But in this case we are talking of the program. So, it is actually a so it is actually a piece of code which creates a delay in uh, in uh, asserting some output right. So, the, so, the purpose of the timer is to create the delay how much delay that can be programmed number 1 and number 2 is that the timer actually you know it is the, the, the basic idea of a timer is that there are two registers one is called the preset register and the other is called the timing register. So, the preset register is actually set whenever you create a timer in the program you actually set the, the preset register gets loaded by a particular value and it stays fixed. While the timing register during the time that the timer is working is active the timing register keeps getting incremented using pulses from an internal clock of the PLC. So, it does not require any external clock sometimes it, it you may uh, you may also uh, for example, as we shall see that counters are actually work on the extra external clock. So, because we want a particular timing. So, so the generally it is fed from the internal clock. So, as the timing pulses from the clock are coming. So, the timing register keeps increasing and when its value exceeds that every time there is a there is a comparison between the timing register and the preset register. So, after some time what will happen is that the timing register value will exceed the preset register value at which time the timer will stop timing further that is the timing register will stop incrementing and the output will be asserted. So, the output will be asserted when T r equal to P r right. Now, this thing happens when the timer is active. So, when is this timer active that is that can be again controlled by using two kinds of logic. So, first is called the enable or reset logic. So, when, whenever this logic becomes <coughs> 0 the timer is not enabled it 
it's it's inactive and the output coil is reset to 1 so this output coil reset to 1 when that that is why it's called reset logic reset to 0 i'm sorry reset to 0 similarly now when when it is enabled so at that time it is enabled two time but whether it will actually time or not that can be again controlled by this run logic so when this run logic will be enabled at that time only the timing pulses come from the internal clock to the timing register at other times it is inhibited okay so i would also like to assert uh, uh, mention that while in this case we have mentioned we have we have actually put it by a single contact we could easily implement a complex logic based on which we we want to enable or uh, we want to uh, assert the run logic for that we can put extra runs and the which will actually program the logic and then finally when the logic is satisfied or not that is that will be simplified by an that will be symbolized by an output coil that output coil contact we can put it here so it's it's not necessary that you will have to always make it a very simple logic you can make it as complex a logic as you want so having done that so 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 this is a basic timer now timers can be timers create delay so we can have various types of delays and all of them can be realized by this by this basic timer module so to recapitulate we have enable reset logic where the timing register is held at 0 when it is de-energized or 0 and the timer is, is enabled when 1. So, at that time the timer is ready to receive the clock pulses and increment its values. Similarly, we have run logic where timing register increments with the internal clock when the enabled reset logic is 1 that is the timer is enabled and the run logic is also 1 just what I said. So, now we take a look at the different kinds of timers. First is the on delay timer. So, here we are saying that if an input timer creates a delay between an input and an output. So, here we say that if the input signal goes on, then the output signal will go on after a little delay. That delay, that is why it is called an on delay. So, while the input signal becomes on the output signal becomes on after a delay and but if the input signal goes off then the output signal goes off immediately so 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 there is no delay in getting off there is a delay in getting on that is why it's called an on delay timer similarly note here that here again it becomes on so here again it becomes on now the timer if this on would have if this on would have persisted then the timer would have been on somewhere somewhere over here the timer would have been would have been on because of this delay but but unfortunately the input became off unfortunately or fortunately the input became off even before this delay interval could expire so the timer also became off and that delay value got erased so the timer never went on similarly now we'll see that we can easily realize this on delay timer using our old timer. So, now here is a circuit, here is a RLL logic circuit or as number of rungs which creates, which takes the basic timer unit, this is the basic timer unit that we have seen, takes it and couples it with another rung and makes an on delay timer. How? So, suppose we pressed, we asserted this input and we want that, so immediately when you asserted this, this output goes high. 
So, immediately when we asserted this, this output goes high. But we want that the other output that is OP002 actually go high after a short delay. So, what happens is that this whenever this OP001 goes on, so you see that the run logic is enabled and the enable reset logic is also enabled, which means that the timer is typing, is timing now. So, and when the delay, when the, when, so, so, so the timing register is getting incremented with the internal clock pulses and when it will cross the preset register at that time the OP002 signal will go up. So, you have this is this is this is wrong. So, you have created a delay. What is the on delay now? So, the on delay is this much. So, this is the on delay. On the other hand, see the moment this becomes off. So, the moment this becomes off immediately these two become off and immediately the OP002 also becomes off. So, there is no delay in getting off while there is some delay in getting on that is why it is called an on delay timer. So, let us see the other kinds of uh, timers. Now, before doing that let us now, so we want an on delay, let us use this on delay timer now in our die press example to see whether we can introduce a delay between the for the bit that is after the down lamp goes on we want that the up solenoid will go on after an on delay right. So, we do that. So, here is our you know our earlier the first two rungs are very similar to our earlier solution except for this one I am sorry. So, except for this one right. So, now what is happening is that suppose the down solenoid is the down solenoid was on. So, actually the connection was coming like this. At this point the down lamp, the down lamp suddenly became on, the down lamp became on because the die hit the limit switch, down limit switch. So, the moment the down lamp becomes on, uh, on so, this will off and the, and, the, and the down solenoid now goes down. Now, when the now look at this. So, initially the OP002 is off. So, therefore, this is off and MCS this is the, the master switch this also becomes off. So, initially supply was coming up to this. Now, the down lamp has become on. So, immediately OP001 becomes on. When OP001 becomes on, the timer is enabled and it is timing. So, after a delay, this OP002 goes on, becomes on. When this becomes on, now there is a direct path. to this and up solenoid becomes on. And when up solenoid becomes on, so then that is then the then, then the usual operation starts. So, what we have demonstrated is that we have put a timer rung and now there is a time delay which can be set by the value of the preset register that we set here between the down lamp coming on and the up solenoid coming on. So, that is what we have achieved. So, now we look at the other different types of timers for example, off delay. So, the off delay timer is, is, is exactly like the on delay timer except for the fact that now 
the delay is getting off. So, the moment the input becomes on, the output also becomes on, no delay. But when the input becomes off, the output becomes off after a certain delay. So, this is the delay. This is the delay. Okay. And the same phenomenon is actually observed that if this becomes on again for a short pulse, see this also becomes on. Then when it becomes off, when it becomes off here, this delay starts here, but before the delay and then after, after, after this delay, this becomes off. But in this case, before this, it can this delay can expire, there is another on. So, it will again become on. So, this cannot fall because the delay has not expired. So, it continues and then at the end of this again after delay, it becomes off. So, basically the same, but just the just a very similar operation with on delay, but only applicable in this case when the input goes from on to off. So, how do we realize this one? So, that is simple to realize. So, you see that now we are having off delay. So, again this is the input goes on. So, immediately OP001 goes on. When OP001 goes on, you see IN001, this is already off in the reset position. So, OP003 immediately goes on. This is my final output. So, there is no delay in getting on. Now, suppose and when OP003 goes off, uh, we can we can use this one. So, it latches. Now, imagine that IN001 goes off. So, when it goes off this OP001, when this goes off, now these are NC contacts. So, when all the time when this was on, these this OP002 was held to 0. Now, when it will be 0, then immediately the timer will start timing and after some time this will become go high, become on. When this becomes on, immediately when this becomes on, this becomes off and OP003 falls down. So, there is a delay in getting OP003 off. So, this is a very simple realization of the off delay timer again using the basic timer construct that we have seen. Similarly, we could have various kinds of timers. For example, uh, we could have a fixed pulse width timer where every time the input becomes on after there is a irrespective of the delay the you will get a fixed pulse from the output. So, here the this the, this is just like an off delay timer uh, yes no not not an off delay timer this is that every time the when the input goes high the output immediately goes high and it is and irrespective of the input it stays for only for a fixed time and then comes down. So, here also when this goes high this goes high and even if this comes down much earlier this keeps so, here it does not come down, but still this comes down and here it comes down, but still this does not come down. So, so, so every time you get the same pulse width. So, every time this edge comes, this ongoing edge at the input, you get a fixed pulse at the output. This is the fixed pulse width timer and it will be an interesting exercise for you to see how this can be realized using our basic timer construct. So, that is a point to ponder for you. Next is that we, we again can classify timers into two ways. One is called retentive timer, another is called non-retentive timer. So, uh, for a non-retentive timer what happens is that see the see the input here goes uh, up. So, the timing register starts 
increasing suppose it's an on delay timer after some time what happens is that the input comes down now the question is at this point so it has timed up to certain amount it has not reached its preset value so now the question is that what will happen to the of but but the input has come down so what would happen to the uh, timing register value at this point so in non retentive timers the timing register value is reset to zero so every time you get another timing signal it again times and in this time because the input stays one for a much longer time so the preset value is is, uh, is reached and when it is reached the the, uh, the the timer output is the timer output output is asserted see here the timer output is not asserted because the timing register did not exceed the preset register value so this is called a non retentive timer contrasted to this there is a retentive timer which uh, Now, note the difference here. Here also, when the input goes one and then after some time it comes down, so the so the timing register value, uh, so the so the timing register value came up to this. It it actually did not cross the preset register. So the output is maintained to zero. Now, when this input falls down at this time also the timing register value is not lost but it is held so as long as the input is zero it is held for the next pulse it counts from the previous value so that's why it retains its timing register value that's why it's called a retentive timer finally as this increases at some point for the maybe for the next pulse it reaches the preset register value and at that point the the timer goes high okay so this is the uh, this is the semantics or meaning of the way the uh, retentive timer works